The first episode is called 11 Years Later. Explain why. Well, it was, it's 11 years later. It's, it's like a kind of clever that you just don't find uh, very often in TV. Max Muchnick, one of the creators of our show, was so sentimental about the show ending that he kept the set at his alma mater, Emerson College. One day Emerson called and said, we gotta give you your set back, and Max just devised this idea. Max sent out uh, an email to the four of us asking if we would like to be part of an election video. And perhaps we would be able collectively to do something that would at least encourage people to get out and use their voice and to vote. Without hesitation, we all said yes, because I think we were all feeling like, what could we do? What, how can we contribute? I got that script. I was laughing out loud. I was crying. It was all there, and I just felt it. And I emailed Max Muchnick, and I said, why can't we do the show again? And he emailed right back, we can. called 11 years later, you know it's been 11 years. You look around, the sets look very similar. The people look very similar. You're like, what was it, two years ago? Three years ago? It did not seem like 11 years. It doesn't feel like we ever left. It feels like maybe we took a hiatus week or we were away for the weekend. Some of that is, is of course, because we have all the same people, including like the same camera guys, hair and makeup teams, same set decorator, same, you know, same everything. So. That helps with the illusion of time not having passed. We also went out of our way to do all of the things and the traditions of how we read the show. We did everything exactly the same. Okay, here we go. In the first episode, we had to tell everybody what the rules were and where everybody had been. In a dream, Will was living with a swarthy man in uniform and Grace was married to a Jew doctor. Yeah, well, we were. But we're single now. That tracks. <laughs> you know, the other thing was, we had to figure out, it'll be weird if they're parents. It'll be weird if they have kids. It'll be weird if the story is, well, they're two separate families sort of existing side by side in the world who interact occasionally, you know? So we thought, well, that all came to a head in the last episode. How do we dismantle that? Because when we talked about it, we. We didn't want to do that. We wanted to do stories about those four characters. We have to acknowledge the audience and the fans who were like, well, wait a minute. Weren't they married and had kids at the end? And we had to figure out a way to put it in the mouths of the four characters. What happened to the children you had who grew up and got married to each other? That never happened. Oh, what a relief. Nobody wants to see you two raise kids. We decided we would break the fourth wall, which is something we had never done in 190 something episodes, and we have four cameras on the actors rolling at all times, A, B, C, and X, and the camera that was on Sean would be the camera that he would that he would break right into the lens, lay it out for the audience. It's basically saying, we know this is a sitcom convention that we're asking you to go with, but go with it, please. Got it? <laughs> Got it. We talked about the idea, well, she's a designer. What if she redid the Oval Office? And then immediately I thought, well, that's that's too broad. You know, that's, that's, that's broad. But the more we sort of got into it, the more we thought, well, it could be a send up of what's happening politically and what's happening with them. I'm instating a new rule. Your politics, your business, but you got to keep it out of the office. Honey, I knew I had some news. You're redecorating the Oval Office. We found a replica of the Oval Office that is something like 97.8% exact to the Trump Oval Office. Ultimately, what we decided is we wanted to do something that had to do with their own hypocrisy. What Trump's politics? Sex and money. Okay, who's the guy? Your lips are purse, your neck is flush, and you're presenting. <laughs> I am writing a protest letter to a congressman about issues that matter in my pants. I know it! I knew it! So Will's compromising his politics for sex, and Grace is compromising her politics for money. How could you? What? I'm an interior designer. Just 
designing an interior. It's a room. What you are doing is so much worse. Me? I'm just here voicing my grievances in person. Before or after giggling like a schoolgirl with Congressman Sandoval in the Rose Garden. Who are you, Mrs. Peacock and Chloe? <laughs> Okay, we're good. We're ready, yeah. David and I had been writing together for over 20 years, and we always said that we started yeah, we've out. We've known each other since we're 15. Yeah. Or 14. 15. Yeah, 15 and 10, but much younger, much, much younger. We had a conscious uncoupling. We took hiatus. Which and we call in the writing room hiatus because we're funny that way. Right, right, exactly. It's wor it's all wordplay. It's wordplay. We aren't a couple, you know. We just did better as a team, and the highs were higher, and the lows were a safer. This relationship is just bigger than my own thing. So stay, and not not just temporary. I mean, as long as it makes sense, it'll be different this time. Will it? Yes. Because all the other times we've done this, we thought it would be different, but this time we know it's going to be exactly the same. That just goes to show how honest and personal this show is to the creators, Max and David, and how their relationships in their real life are reflected in these characters. Never say never. That's what I've learned from all of this. Show me Will and Grace. Not hungry, couldn't eat a thing. What are you in the mood for, Jack? French toast. <laughs>